Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Eco ITX01. At first impression, this seems like yet another USB Type-C hub, which is honestly pretty standard these days. But what makes it actually a little more special is that it has a built-in DAC, or Digital to Analog Converter Chip. So the claim here is this can improve the sound quality, especially if you're connecting it to more powerful, larger headphones. And that's because Eco, this brand, is actually more well known in the audio, more specifically audiophile space, for making IEMs. They pack impressive sound in their headphones, so this is them branching out into more accessories, and so it makes sense that even a USB hub from them would also combine some form of music capability. In fact, the DAC here also has three built-in EQ modes, one for music, one for gaming, and also one for movies, which you can adjust between just by tapping on this key here on the side, and that can change the sound pro file. Also has both 3.5 millimeter as well as 4.4 millimeter balanced I.O. The other ports as far as the hub is concerned are still pretty good and competitive including a full-sized HDMI port that supports 4K 60 Hertz so you can connect your laptop to a HDTV or monitor without any problems and it also allows it to still support power delivery up to 100 watts for charging. Up to 10 different devices can be plugged in. This will retail for under 90 bucks which Overall, I would say it's a little bit more pricey if you're comparing it with a regular USB Type-C hub. Uh, sometimes those will retail for around 50 bucks or so. Definitely adding a little bit more of cost here that you're paying for that built-in DAC function. Specifically, that DAC chip is the SN8600 with a frequency of 20 to 20,000 hertz. Inside will obviously have the hub itself, which we'll take a closer look at, and then other accessories. They give you just include a quick user guide. Also, they give you a soft pouch that you can use to carry the dock when on the go. So taking a closer look here at the build quality, overall it is well built, just like many other hubs these days, constructed out of an aluminum alloy shell, certainly doesn't look out of place next to something like a Dell XPS or a MacBook. You have just the logo here from Eco and the high-res audio branding. On the side here, by the way, it's a little bit tapered out and we have the two audio connectors. And then on the bottom here, we have the IO, including micro and full-sized SD readers, Type-C here for data, and then we have two more, which are for USB 3.0, that is type A full sized and then on the other end we have another type C that's meant for pass through charging up to 100 watts full sized HDMI and another uh, USB type A full sized port along with on the edge here you have a LED indicator light that is meant for the DAC so you can switch between the different modes just by touching on here it's a kind of capacitive touchpad or sensor and you can then hold for a few seconds to go through the three different modes now otherwise there is a small LED indication light when it's being plugged in and that's it very simple the cable here is flat and then just connects using type C also made out of metal. Maybe one thing I do wish is they could make this end perhaps magnetic so it would attach onto the end when you're not using it or somehow um, just uh, make it stick into the sides uh, since right now it kind of just dongles a little bit but still is overall a very clean design. Really not necessarily any larger than a standard USB Type-C hub despite the fact that it has additional DAC functionality built on in. This is pretty much just plug and play, no drivers are needed of course, and it also will work with a lot of Android smartphones if your device supports OTG via the Type-C port or data transmission. So on this particular phone it does, so once we plug it in it will pretty much be instantly ready recognized and we also have some sound profile effects that pops up but this is just on our particular phone it's recognizing we have headphones plugged in including also tablets uh, that have a type c port you can also plug in or a thunderbolt port and it will read back content transfer over your files once plugged into power we have an led light here that turns on as well as this eco button also springs to life and it's actually a colored led as far as this section is concerned and it starts off in the hi-fi mode which is kind of this purplish uh, almost white color hold it on it for a few seconds it should go into the movie mode which is going to be kind of more of a green color slightly warmer and then hold on it for a few more seconds and it will go into the gaming mode which is going to be bluish it's a bit more obvious to the eye the camera here is not doing the best job of picking it up but the colors here can be distinguished purple greenish as well as blue to represent the three different modes. It's worth mentioning that every time that you switch into a different mode from the EQ, uh, the music on your device will likely pause for a second and then you can tap to resume. So moving into the audio quality and performance using the DAC, overall I would say that it definitely sounds a little bit better compared to the built-in DAC of most smartphones and 
laptops particularly, I would say. It does overall just pack in a little more detail, a bit more resolution, and also bigger volume. You can plug it up to even larger headphones and it's able to drive the sound compared to on a lot of uh, lower cost devices, especially if you're wearing studio headphones, more powerful drivers, it may struggle a little more. But on here, everything can still sound loud and clean, amplified, but still rich and full of detail. Now, the three different modes do have a very obvious difference when you're switching between them. Personally though, I just prefer to leave it onto the hi-fi mode. It has the best balanced sound in terms of giving you nice amounts of details in the trebles and vocals, instrumentals, but also a nice mix of bass, sounding spacious and almost like you're in the live environment. When you switch it into the movie mode, the difference is it uh, definitely bumps up the bass a lot more, but also squeezes the higher end frequencies and trebles. It, sounds a little bit more distorted at the higher end, for lack of a better word, but the bass is definitely significantly boosted, so you feel more of that vibration as you're watching something like an action film, immersive and exciting, but not necessarily quite as detailed on trebles and, again, vocals. The final gaming mode is almost the antithesis of the movie mode, where it significantly bumps up clarity in the treble, but also tries to reduce a lot of the bass. So this will make it easier if you're gaming to kind of hear other people that you are maybe connected to in terms of dialogue. So things like text as well as podcasts, uh, things like your team members trying to communicate with you will be very easy to understand, but I do feel like it is lacking a little bit more on the lower end as a result. So personally, I do think that the hi-fi music mode is the most balanced out of the trio, and even if I was watching a movie or gaming, honestly, I would just kind of leave it on that mode. But all of them do sound overall quite good. It is, of course, no issues in terms of latency since everything is wired. And as far as connectivity is concerned, quite good. Everything is gold-plated, no real hiccups or uh, any white noise, nothing like that. Now, like I said, it's a, a universal hub, so anything that has Type-C with a uh, data supported can pretty much work with this with OTG. So that includes MacBooks, includes uh, Chromebooks, it includes Windows computers, even Nintendo Switch and gaming consoles that have Type-C. Now I've plugged in quite a variety of devices, including cards, as well as a mouse, as well as a thumb drive, and all of this is being recognized, again, plug and play with your device, including even on a mobile OS like Android is supported these days. So we have the cursor here up here without any problems. This would work particularly well if you want to pair it with a phone that has a desktop mode, like a lot of Samsung Galaxy smartphones, especially flagships, and also Huawei devices, even LG phones. If you further plug in the HDMI to a larger monitor, it can transform it into almost a PC or desktop experience. Demoing that in action, I have the HDMI here connected to this monitor, and the other side is just attached to our phone and we're able to get more work done while being plugged into a keyboard and mouse. And overall, it gets a little bit warm, definitely, especially if you are using it in the charging mode, but never too hot. I didn't really encounter too many issues either in terms of overheating or performance. Everything was still pretty consistent as far as file transfer speed. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Eco ITX-01. Again, it's a neat idea. It's not something I've actually seen before in the form of a USB hub, also combining a higher end DAC for high res audio playback, I think is pretty clever. And especially for folks that, again, tend to listen to music more seriously. If you're interested in something like this, again, primarily with that interesting built-in DAC function more than anything else, you can check out more details in the links below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.